Hi, my name is Bond, James Bond, but friends call me 007. I am a self-employed spy and last year I made $100,000 in gross income. So this year I'm filing single and I want to walk you through my Form 1040 ES giving you step-by-step -step instructions on how to fill out your own Form 1040 ES. Let's jump right into it. One thing I want to say here is that when you file Form 1040ES, you got to understand the background behind it. Everybody knows that income tax is a pay-as-you-go system, right? So if you are, let's say, uh, you are an employee, you pay federal withholding as part of every paycheck, every two weeks, every month, every week, whatever. But if you are self-employed, what happens? You might have to make quarterly estimated tax payments towards the amount that you expect to owe the IRS or you might have an underpayment penalty. Nobody wants that, right? So those payments should include both your income and self-employment taxes and are reported via Form 1040 ES. And self-employment taxes, you have two types. You have uh, Social Security and then you have Medicare. So for your Social Security, that's 12.4% and Medicare, 2.9% taxes. One thing I want to say here is that when you work for a company, your employer will pay part of that and you will pay the other part. In other words, 50%. But if you are self-employed, you pay everything. And so if you are self-employed as a sole proprietorship, an independent contractor, or a freelancer, and you earn more than $400,000, so $400 or more, not 1000 sorry. If you earn $400 or more, you may need to pay your self-employment tax. This is important. And this is true even if you are paid in cash and you don't receive a 1099 miscellaneous. The IRS doesn't care about that. They care about the revenue. So keep in mind that you may be able to offset this income, of course, if you have qualifying expenses. And you can actually uh, avoid quarterly tax payments if you meet specific criteria. For example, you will not have to pay estimated tax payments for the current year if during the prior tax year you had no tax liability, your tax year was 12 months, and you are a U.S. citizen or resident alien. So those three, this trifecta should come to play. And uh, one thing I also want to say here is that you might make estimated tax payments for a taxable income that comes from stock sales, sale of house that does not qualify for the exclusion, interest, dividends, rents. And those estimated taxes are due, actually the last, they're due in April, mid-April, mid-June, mid-September, and mid-January. So for 2022, you're looking at uh, April 17, 2022, June 15, 2022, September 15, 2022, and January to January 15, 2023. Okay, and this is important. And uh, what it's important to also remember here is that you want to have all your paperwork ready when you file. When you're ready to file, you got to have all the paperwork. Your profit and loss, in other words, your income and expenses. In some cases, you might have to have your balance sheet also. Okay, as I said earlier, in our hypothetical example, I happen to be a self-employed spy. And last year, I made $100,000 in gross income. I'm filing single this year, and I want to walk you through my Form 1040 ES, giving you step-by-step -step instructions on how to fill out your own Form 1040. Are you with me? Are you there? Hello? Okay, let's start. I want you to look right now on the screen. So here is the first part. So here is the estimated tax worksheet. So you put on line one, your adjusted gross income. So we made uh, $100,000. Your deductions, you have to, so I'm filing uh, single. So you put uh, your deduction, your standard deduction, 12,550. If you want to atomize deductions, you want to enter the total amount of uh, atomization here, atomized deductions, all right? We are now on in 2B, and we do have a QBI deduction, so the Qualified Business Income Deduction. In, in my case, I have 2,450. If this applies to your business, then you put the amount that is that is applicable, okay? You want to add lines 2A and 2B. So when we add 2A and 2B, we have on line 2C, we have $15,000. Do you see that? $12,550 plus $2,450. And on line 3, you want to subtract 
15,000 from your adjusted gross income, your AGI. So that is uh, 85,000, that's the result. And uh, how do you estimate your tax? So basically, I'm gonna show you later on, don't worry. So you have to look at your 2021 tax rate schedules, or it can be 2022, it doesn't matter. The IRS actually publishes this every year. And if you are using software, the software updates the data automatically, okay? So basically, we are liable for, I am liable in this case for $14,449. That's the, the tax that I have to pay. So you report the same data on line six. You also put it on line eight. And so my self-employment tax happens to be 2,678. I will explain to you later on how I find that number. And uh, I don't have any other taxes. So if I actually uh, add lines eight through 10, I have 17,127. Okay, so you see here, line eight, we have 14,449. My self-employment tax on line nine is 2,678. I don't have any other taxes on line 10. So when you add everything, you have 17,127. You follow me? All right, let's move on. So here, 11B, we have uh, $1,127. This is uh, earned income, additional tax, additional child tax, fuel tax, all kinds of tax credits. If those are applicable to you, you enter them there. So your total 2021, this could be 2022, it could be 2023, but I'm just showing you the math here. So the total annual estimated tax here is $16,000. That's my, the amount I have to pay. So what you wanna do is, and the math is very clear here, the IRS will actually guide you. So you wanna multiply line 11C. 11C is $16,000 by uh, 90%. So you get 14,400. And the required annual payments based on prior year's tax is uh, 12,500. And so the required amount that you have to pay to avoid a penalty can be either the smaller of 14,400 or 12,500. So we put 12,500 because this is a uh, this is a lower than 14,400. And so the income tax withheld and estimated to be withheld during the year it happens to be 14,500. And here I just want to show you quickly on the screen here you have uh, the filing status. So we have, you can see here uh, for the 2021 tax year, 2022 tax year, we have uh, for single, married, filing jointly, married, filing separately, head of household. It really depends on your situation, right? So this is really something that you have to, you have to uh, find. In my case, I'm filing single. As I said before, I'm filing single. So this is why I just entered 12,550. Let's go to line 2B. Now, I want to explain the I want to explain some uh, phraseology here. I want to explain what you need to understand. What is QBI? So on line 2B, if you remember, I put uh, 2,450. That's QBI, the Qualified Business Income Deduction. What is that? Let's just quickly break it down here, folks. So the Qualified Business Income Deduction is a tax deduction that allows eligible self-employed and small business owners to deduct up to 20% of the qualified business income on their taxes. In general, Total taxable income must be under $165,000 for single filers or $330,000 for joint filers to qualify. Okay, for example, in 2022, the limits are $170,000, $170,050 for single filers and $340,100 for joint, for joint filers. Okay, so this is something that you need to, uh, and you can qualify for the QBI deduction if you are a sole proprietorship, if you are a partnership, if you're an S corporation, if you're an LLC, a limited liability company, it doesn't matter. And so what is qualified business income? Basically, qualified business income is defined as the net amount of qualified items of income, gain, deduction, and loss with respect to any trade or business. That's basically the IRS's definition, but let me just say, in everyday layman language, that means your business is net profit. That's what it is, okay? But it also means that not all business income qualifies though. So QBI will, will exclude things like capital gains or losses, we have dividends, interest income, inc income earned outside the U.S., and certain wage and guaranteed payments made to partners and shareholders. Okay, so you have to be very careful about that. And the, to qualify for the QBI, you just have to, I already gave the uh, the thresholds that you have to think about. Line three, do you see, do you remember line three? Line three, this is, uh, you have to subtract line two C from line one. I want to talk about that. I want you to look on the screen right now. We have uh, the tax rate schedules for 2021. This can be 2022, 2023, doesn't matter. But this, you get it from the IRS, all right? 
obviously if you are using accounting software the software will update the data automatically or you don't have to do the the math but here if you are you, if you're interested in knowing how the whole thing works i'm just showing you here how do we find uh, the amount that we have so 85,000 is the amount we had on line three do you see that line three 85,000 what you want to do here is that on the screen here you have to look for where 85,000 what is 85,000 so you can see here that it says if line three is blah 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 I want you to look a little bit around in the fourth in the fourth category to your right in the fourth quadrant okay and so basically you have to have 85,000 minus 40,525 and that that will give you 44,475 okay and you have to multiply that 4,475 times 22% that will give you $9,784.50 and what you do here is that you will add the 4,664 to the 9,784.50 and that will give you the $14,448 48 dollars and 50 cents that's how i found the number okay so this is you just have to go to the uh, to the sheet to the worksheet to the tax to the um, the tax rate schedule and get your uh, your tax your tax amount there <laughs> Let me talk about line nine. This is an interesting line. And line nine, you have a self-employment. I want you to look right now on the screen. How did we get the number? If you go back to our sheet, you would see that on line nine, we have self-employment tax of $2,678, right? Are you with me? All right. So really here, how did we get this number? I want to explain to you. So. Here on the screen here, you have a self-employment tax and deduction worksheets for lines one and nine. So we started, I started by making $100,000 and uh, you want to subtract. So on line two, you have uh, the same $100,000. On line three, you multiply the 100,000 times uh, 92.35, you get the 92,350. And you have to multiply line three by 2.9%, you get the $2,678.15. This is how I got the number. All right, this is how I got the number based on the sheets that the numbers that the IRS all already gave me. So this is available on the tax deduction, the tax and deduction worksheet. And uh, line five, social security, nothing to do with that. Uh, line six, you have to enter what you, uh, your expected wages, that's 92,350. And you wanna subtract line six from line five. So we got here, we have uh, 50,450 and uh, so, the bottom line here is if you add lines four and nine, you get $2,618.15. This is how I got the number. So if you go back to your form 10, so to the estimated tax worksheet on line nine, this is how I found $2,678. Are you with me? All right, let's move on here. So we have line 13 to 15. So here we have uh, income tax withheld and estimated to be withheld during another year. So we put 14,500 and uh, you have to subtract line 13. So this is uh, 14,500 from line 12 C. If you go back, you have line 12 C. I want to quickly show you line 12 C. Line 12 C is uh, 12,500. So this is the required annual payments to avoid a penalty. And you constantly want to overpay. It's just better to overpay than underpay because you have, you basically are risking an under penalty and underpayment penalty, right? And you don't want that so line uh, where were we so if the results so line 14 a we have uh, 2,000 and is there is if uh, the result is zero or less in our case it's not so we found on line B 14 B here on the screen we have a uh, 1500 okay and 1500 here so what I want to say here is that you are basically if you go back to line 15 if the first payment you are required to make is due April 15, 2022, in this case will be 2022, you want to enter the a quarter of line 14A. In this case, uh, we have uh, 2,000. If you divide 2,000 by 4, you have 500. So this will be applicable to you. You have to make this payment by April 15, 2022. It really depends on your situation. 
I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another section of the Awesome Story Kiwi Show. I'm still having a conversation with you. I'm breaking it down for you. Today, we are talking about Form 1040 ES instructions line by line. Let's move on. I want to talk to you about the record of estimated tax payments. The IRS pays a lot of attention to this. This is so important. This is how they track you. The, not they track you. This is how they track your payments. And they want to make sure that you are indeed complying with federal tax laws. So you can see here, we have inputted how much I have paid during the year. That's last year. So you put the payment due date, the payment amount, the date you made the payment, the form of payments, what do you use a credit card, debit card, whatever it is, the amount paid, we put 4,000 and uh, total amount paid and credited 4,000. So this is for the first quarter. Second quarter, you can see on the screen, we did the same thing. We paid a 4,000. The third quarter, same thing with the dates, with the method of payments, debit card in this case, or credit card, doesn't matter. And um, the last payment, the last quarter, you see it here as well. So if you total everything, in my case, you have $16,000, okay? And uh, so if you have uh, made a payments and you're, you don't have any uh, situation where you have an, an underpayment penalty, that's fine. But once you prepare your Form 1040 ES, you got to be ready also to make a payment for the next quarter, right? So I'm very, uh, I'm very methodical here. So I'm just uh, showing you on the screen the estimated tax, the payment voucher number four. So this is for the fourth quarter. This is what it looks like. So I'm paying a four thousand dollars to the IRS. This is a self self employment tax, and you put your name first, name last name, your social security, your address. Okay. Now if you do this electronically you don't have to enter this and mail it to the IRS whatever no you don't have to do this this is for illustration purposes if you're using uh, accounting software or tax software for that matter you basically do everything electronically you can make a payment to the IRS electronically you don't have to make the payment manually okay it depends on uh, your history it depends on your preference but this is how things go this is how you break it down this is how you know exactly how much you owe the IRS based on your history with the agency or based also on your uh, income, on your self-reported income for the year. I want to show you a few other things before we, we actually finish today. So I want to show you on the screen here. So the, uh, the payment address will depend on where you live and where your business is located or where your activity is located. I want you to look right there on the screen. Uh, on the screen. Sorry about this. So basically, if you live in a certain state, then you have to use the address that is uh, corresponding to that state. Okay, and to pay your taxes, I want you to look right now on the screen, the second screenshots. To pay your taxes, you have several options. So the IRS has, has made it very clear and very easy for taxpayers to make their payments. So you can pay by bank account for free, you can actually, uh, you have, there's no registration required. You can schedule payments up to a year in advance. This is kind of cool because if you just want to put things on autopilot, this is really cool. You can also pay by debit card, credit card, or a digital wallet, for example, PayPal. And this is for individuals and businesses, not for payroll tax deposits. And there are some processing fees. You can also go to the IRS websites where you can say that you can see on the screen here that you can make business payments or schedule estimated payments with the electronic federal tax payment system, the EFTPS. And this is a cool system for businesses, tax professionals, and, and uh, individuals. All right. So you can make payment from a bank account and that's kind of cool. But you have to enroll though. There is enrollment required for this. So the address on the screen, you can see it is uh, EFTPS.com slash EFTPS. What I want to say here is that you have several ways, several ways to make your payments to the IRS. So you can't be talking about, well, I didn't know how to do this. No, you can write a check if you want to. You can uh, do things electronically. There are, as a matter of fact, there are other ways you can pay. Also, you have same day wire. Let's say you are actually paying on the very last day on the deadline. You can do same day wire. There might be some bank fees, though. You have check or money order through U.S. mail. You have cash. 
there are retail partners and other methods where you can actually pay the IRS via cash. And you also have uh, electronic funds withdrawal during e-filing. This is what I was talking to you earlier. So when you actually file your taxes, you have that option, depending on the software that you use, Trevor Tax, Tax Act, whatever, you have the option to choose which which payment method you want to go and you can go with electronic funds withdrawal the IRS is totally okay with that and that's of course if your accounting software your tax software rather supports that system it must be compatible with their uh, with their back office or with their how the the software was built all right folks this is it for today's conversation I was explaining to you form 1040 ES line by line instructions I hope you gain as much value as uh, as much value from this video as we did while preparing it. Thank you so much. Good luck, and I will see you next time. God bless.